Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, today's video is another tutorial video. Um, I know a lot of my videos, I tend to title it stuff that's pretty clickbaity. That's like, hey, the, the best flask in Noita, the coolest looking spell in Noita. But I try to be accurate. I try to make sure that whenever I post it, I, I truly believe that uh, those things are true. And um, and I, I hope you guys would agree that uh, I usually I usually try to be you know deliver with what I say. And in this video, I try to uh, you know I'm, I'm trying to stick consistent with that. I think this may be one of the greatest spells in Noita, if not the greatest. So uh, I'll let you guys decide if it's clickbait. Uh, let's get into it. Let's discuss the add trigger, and we'll also t discuss add timer and add expiration trigger. So uh, what I'm about to discuss, we'll 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 start with on like the new new player level, and then we'll get a little more advanced, and then we'll get to the at, like super in depth. So uh, that way you have a foundation to go on. So if you are an experienced player, you may have something to learn from this, but it may take a moment before we get to the more complex stuff. Uh, this is to teach you the mechanic, but that doesn't mean I'll be showing everything there is to know about this spell, because there are tons of stuff that I don't know. Uh, but with that said. This will give you a, a place for you to create your own combinations and maybe invent some kind of spell combo I've never seen before. So uh, let, let's get into it. Oh yeah, one last thing. One last thing before we uh, before we get into it, let's uh, look at this real quick. This this guy right here is the Master of Masters. It is uh, a boss that spawns in like the bottom right of the map. That is where you unlock these spells. If you have never killed this guy before, these spells will not be unlocked. With that said, if you're ever going into a run, you don't just say, oh, I'm gonna build this, this add trigger wand and just assume you'll find it. Usually it means if you're gonna build an add trigger wand um, and you're planning to do it in this specific run, you need to go kill that boss to get him to drop that spell it is usually how you would approach it. So um, that, you know, you can, you can come across it in a random run. I don't want to kill your hopes. But at the same time, I don't want to give you false expectations that once you have killed this boss, you oh, you'll see him in every run, you know, when that's that's definitely not the case. It's still very rare that I see it. Uh, you'll see you'll see one of these every once in a while, but it's definitely not every run. It, it's still pretty damn rare that you'll, you'll see it. So you see, usually if you see me building an ad trigger wand, it's because I went and I killed the Master of Masters. So let's get into the, uh, the build here. So uh, for the new players, we're starting off with this... Uh, this bubble spark trigger and uh, it has a penta after it so that means that whenever we shoot this bubble it'll fire off this penta which is five spells so one two three four five so if you fire this it fires off the uh, the five chainsaws that are in it nothing too special there nothing too crazy so uh, just know that whenever this bubble spark does hit something these chainsaws will actually hit for some pretty significant damage so I shoot at the statue there you'll see it actually you know it does over 100 damage uh, it is nice though if you add a couple modifiers onto the bubble spark to really to really amp up its damage. Uh, we'll give it homing so that it's it's more accurate, so it's not so floaty. So when we shoot it, it'll just pull it onto enemies, gives us a ton of damage, and then we'll add piercing. Now this this is huge. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the order that you put them. But uh, this piercing is a big deal because normally whenever you fire off a single uh, bubble like this and it hits an enemy, when it hits the enemy, the bubble dies and it delivers the payload. Right, it delivers the spells in it. Piercing, however, makes it so that whenever the bubble makes contact with an enemy, it will continue to fire off the payload over and over. So an example of this would be, let's say that you had a bubble um, a bubble spark would trigger and you put a nuke, a nuke in the payload, right? Well, a nuke only has one charge. So whenever you fired it off, um, you, would, you would expect it to only fire off one nuke. But if you have piercing on it, the bubble spark will hit the enemy and it will continue to fire off nukes. That that single bubble spark has your only charge of nuke, but because it has piercing, that one charge of nuke could end up firing off 20, 30 nukes just because as the bubble's piercing into the enemy, it's firing the, the payload off over and over and over, which could, you know, even though it ha only had one charge, the charge is used at the moment of the bubble's creation, not on the bubble making contact. So that's how that's how you can get uh, a lot of use out of something that has charges if you put it inside of a payload that has piercing on it. So let me just go ahead and real quickly show you what a uh, piercing homing can do to an enemy, just so the players will see. Like this is this is a good combination right here. It's a little mana expensive, but whenever we shoot it at bad guys, uh, okay, in that case it didn't quite get to him. <laughs> there it goes. Sometimes it gets real close, but it doesn't hit the hitbox, and, and you're just like, no, it was weak. But no, in that case, it was just a, a funky hitbox. In fact, you could even use something like projectile area teleport so that it just jumps onto the enemies and uh, you don't have to worry about the hitbox getting all funky like that. Um, but yeah, so there you go. You can see it's a pretty pretty strong combination. But again, our problem here is 
the uh, the mana that I have here. When I fire it, if you look, it actually burns through the mana very quickly, and this leaves you vulnerable. Um, whenever you're firing at lots of enemies, if you fire over here at tons of enemies, and then you have to wait for it to recharge, and another enemy comes from the other side, it, it could get you killed. So this is where the ad trigger comes in handy. Uh, so let's let's real quickly let's show you a comparison here. So the bubble spark with trigger and the add trigger bubble these are like the same spell essentially this is a bubble spark with trigger and this is a bubble that we added the trigger onto they do the same thing you could put a single spell after them these these are pretty much identical combos now the difference between these two combos would be that um the bubble spark with trigger costs 16 mana while the add trigger costs 10, and the bubble spark, it, whatever projectile you put here, it doesn't matter the mana cost. The add trigger will override whatever mana cost uh, is attached to, uh, the, whatever, whatever projectile it's attached to, it overrides its mana cost. So for example, if this add trigger was attached to a spell that cost 100 mana, it doesn't matter. The 100 mana becomes zero mana. It's all about what does the add trigger cost. Same idea for the add timer and the add expiration. All that matters is the cost of the of the add timer, I guess, in this scenario, which would be 20 mana. That's what, another reason that the add trigger is the best of the, the group of three, because the add trigger, not only is it its mechanics are better, but it's the cheapest of the three. These cost 20, this cost 10. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, before, like I said, we were running, uh, we were running this combo right here. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, oops. We see the board back here. You'll see that uh, it fires off just like this. Nothing, no, no surprises. So we're gonna swap it out with this combo. Pretty much same, same identical build that we have here. Nothing, no surprises. Nothing crazy. Now look at the mana cost here. This is the, we're in the same mana cost as we were before. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move this add trigger over two spots. This is something I showed in one of my previous videos and I really didn't go into detail about and a lot of people messaged me, you know, how does that work? How do you use this blah blah blah? So I figured, you know what? Let's make a video on it. Let's let's rant on it for a bit. So now these spells that are in between the add trigger and the bubble spark, these are free. Watch when I fire it. So again, if we scoot this over and put them on the outside, tons of mana costs put them in between we like sandwich them in between the the add trigger and whatever projectile i'm adding it to they all become part of the projectile you actually can see it on the board right here it only shows the add trigger what happens is it creates pretty much a bubble spark trigger that naturally has homing that naturally has piercing these become part of the brand new projectile in fact you can scoot this over oh i don't know why i moved them so slowly um you could scoot this over like so. So here's the projectile. Here's the add trigger. You could fill this with as many modifiers as you would like. You know, heavy shot, acceleration. Uh, put this on there. It doesn't matter. As many home, uh, as many modifiers as you like. The mana cost remains the same. Uh, it, you will get the side effects of whatever, uh, like for example, the cast delay that the the heavy shot adds. That still gets added. Um, the yeah, cast away from that one as well. You still have to deal with that stuff, but the mana cost becomes the is is the identical. There is no difference. So okay, now now you're getting the idea. I think you're getting the idea of how you put modifiers in between it. So we're gonna take this uh, even further. This is where you get to the more advanced stuff. Uh, hopefully you can see some some cool ideas though with what I've shown so far. Um, in between the add trigger and the bubble spark, it is nice to put stuff like the reduce recharge. That is a really good place to put reduce recharges because those are kind of expensive. They speed up your wand, uh, but they cost 12 mana. We'll just slide it in between the add trigger and the projectile, and they, it speeds up the wand naturally without having to uh, cost any extra mana, which is which is crazy. So let's get into uh, the the more in depth mechanic here. So the bouncing burst acceleration build i've talked about this in the past I, like i said i had a video on it and um I, I i covered a bit on it but i'm gonna i'm gonna re-go over this and i'm gonna show the advanced mechanic off of it so the uh the bouncing burst has a natural modifier that makes it where uh depending on the momentum gained in its lifetime it actually has a multiplier to do more damage because on the bump the, the bouncing uh burst on its own does three damage and then if you put an acceleration on it, it goes from doing three 
to in that case five it really depends on how much speed like if you had it bouncing around for a long time it gets going really fast and if it hits it at the fastest speed it'll do even more damage so uh you're wanting to make this bouncing burst start as slow as possible and hit going as fast as possible so something like a heavy shot is perfect for this it will take this bouncing burst from uh it was doing what was it like five or six damage with the acceleration to now the heavy shot which adds 44 damage well now we're going to shoot it at the statue and uh well, we're going to try to shoot it at the statue it's kind of hard to hit because of the acceleration Acceleration. I mean, because, yeah, there it goes. What was that number? Hold on. It was going so fast, I barely I barely even saw it. Um, 600, I think. Something. It was, it was going really fast, though, whenever that thing made contact. 250, that's more realistic, because it's not always going to hit the enemy at, like, peak speed. Uh, in fact, we can even t attach a rotate towards to it to make it more accurate, so we don't have to depend on the RNG. Uh, but, yeah, there you go. 237. So that's pretty good damage, especially considering the modifiers are pretty minimal. Uh, but it is decently mana expensive because this costs 40 mana, just to be accurate. Um, this has cost seven, 7 mana, not bad, and this costs 20 mana. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the add trigger. Now all of these become free because this is an add trigger bouncing burst. And you'll see that uh, without it, we'll fire it and look at our mana. It's pretty, pretty mana expensive, nothing too terrible. But uh, with the uh, add trigger, we fire it. Like, no mana cost at all. And you'll see here that uh, it's just showing a picture of the add trigger. That's it. So all of these naturally become part of the bouncing burst. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can double up on the spells that are in between it. So we have one acceleration and one heavy shot and one rotate towards. Now remember, I said the, the slower this goes in the beginning and the faster it goes at the end, the more damage. So we were shooting it and did like 250 damage. If we attach a double spell to it, watch what happens. It's going to cast the acceleration and the heavy shot and the mod uh, the rotate towards, which this part doesn't matter so much, but mainly the acceleration and the heavy shot. It's going to cast them twice. This is one of the only examples in Noita, there aren't too many of them, where you can actually loop into itself. It casts all this stuff and then loops around and casts th them again. So whenever we shoot into the st statue here, you're going to see 13,000 damage. And that thing wasn't even traveling that fast. That was just kind of a basic shot. Uh, and, and in fact, we'll head over to the board now and we'll look at it. So remember, it went from like 250 to 13,000. It's crazy. Uh, so if you look at the board, you'll see the modifiers are actually coming back now. That's because the first set are naturally part of the bouncing burst. The second set, however, because of this double spell, which is placed on the outside of the add trigger, it's looping around and grabbing them again and attaching them as regular modifiers onto the bouncing burst. So it's a bouncing burst that naturally has acceleration and heavy shot that now has an acceleration and heavy shot modifier attached to them on top of the natural ones. It's crazy, I know, but you can go nuts with this thing. You can do some serious damage. Uh, in fact, I'll, I can run around in the level for a little bit so you can see it in action. But this thing pops. And, and there are way, I'm sure there's even crazier combinations that you can come up with. But this one doesn't even require that much. Like, we only, oh, the statue's dead. <laughs> there, is, there isn't even that much on here. And this thing is, you know, one shot and everything. So this combo really helps you to build stuff to, to kill, like, bosses and whatever else you need to, to kill very quickly. Oh, I'm just standing there tanking shots. I almost got myself killed. I was having too much fun. Yeah, there you go. That's the mechanic. I don't want to rant on it for too long. I just know I was getting DMs about it and stuff. And people saying, hey, you showed it for a moment, but can you explain why it does that? I mean, honestly, I can't explain too much in detail why it does that. It just works that way. But hopefully some people can discover some really cool wand combinations that even I have never seen before uh, knowing this mechanic. Because while this mechanic, when it was added to the game, it really wasn't discovered uh, how it worked and how, you, how it could be utilized for many months after it was already added. And that's one of the things that's awesome about Noita is that even though there hasn't been like a patch uh, recently, it doesn't mean there isn't things uh, yet to be discovered. You know, new combinations are discovered all the time. New mechanics are discovered all the time. So maybe with uh, so one of the new guys, maybe somebody who just joined Noita in the last week will use this combination and, and discover something that uh, no one in Noita has seen before. Let's hope. And then we can uh, just become better Noita players because of it. Well, thanks for hanging out, you guys. Thanks for all the positive uh, the comments and all the feedback and all the likes. I plan to post a, another video soon, a longer video, maybe just doing a regular run. Maybe I'll start showing some longer run videos. Maybe do some sun quest, stuff like that. We'll see. Uh, most of my longer runs I do uh, live over on Twitch. I stream almost every day. 
And uh, but I, I, do, I would like to have a couple more to throw up on YouTube, uh, something where I just hang out with you guys and I talk to you guys on, uh, uh, you know, the YouTube community, because when I'm streaming on Twitch, I'm distracted with the chat and everything. While uh, on YouTube, I can focus more on ranting uh, what's happening in game, which some people may prefer that. So uh, anyways, thanks for stopping by, you guys. Stay sweaty. Stay awesome. Deuces, you guys.